Hello there and welcome along to Upping the Ante in association with 188Bet. With me, David Jennings, him Gavin Lynch and Chris Graham from our sponsors, 188Bet. Morning guys, I'm in the 188Bet dungeon this Monday morning for Upping the Ante. Got the colours on and ready to chat horses me you with Cheltenham ever closer. And what a weekend it was, Gavin. We've seen probably, it's the last weekend of clues, but boy did we get clues. We got Altior, we got Native River, that Saturday in Newbury. Brilliant. Low on quantity, but high on quality. Yeah, no, Newbury on Saturday was excellent, excellent. Um, I think we should start with the best horse in training. Yeah, I, Altior, we, we waited a long time to see him. It was certainly worth the wait, wasn't it? Yeah, he's a fantastic horse. As I said, I, I think he's underrated, to be honest. I think we're always looking for superstars in racing, be it Sam Crows and and so on. But I think Altior is the real deal, and he deserves a higher rating than 170. He beat Politologue easy at the weekend by four lengths. He has a rating of 165. Like if you look back at some of the greats that were in racing, Moscow Flyer is best 180, Sprinter Sacker 188, Cato Star 193, Mastermind 186. Altior is way better than 170. Mm. I think he's a certainty for the champion chase. Do you know the only problem I had with the performance? The camera angles. Did you watch the race on ITV? I did. Oh, oh, where? Head on. Oh, side, back. I had a headache. Yeah, that was the only problem I had with the performance was, was trying to figure out the camera angles. And but ITV. we won't hold that against Altier. Yeah, no, it was a phenomenal he's, performance. He's a brilliant horse. Like, since he's, he, he was betting two bumpers out of three, and then he won five over five over hurdles and seven over seven over fences, so. Well, you tell me this then, Gavin. Why is Altior still available with some firms at slightly odds against? Why is this not one to three? Uh, I think, is he five, four to five with one eight eight bet? To me, that's, that's great value. Sorry, four to six. Four to six, yeah. Do you still think that's value? Uh, well, I thought it was four to five, but four to six... That's the price he definitely should be odds on. Like when you look back two years ago in the Supreme, he beat Min by seven lengths and he beat Bouverdere, the champion hurdle, by eight and a half lengths. He's just a fantastic horse. Now I've got a question for you, but I'm going to give it to Chris first. Duvan v Altior, if both turned up 100% peak fitness, peak form in the Queen Mother Champion Chase, who wins? So Duvan against Altior in the Champion Chase next month, both at 100%, but who would win? Well, that's a really, really tricky question for me, and I've interpreted it in a certain way, I hope you don't mind, and that is that I'm looking at it purely from a 2018 point of view rather than a, an overall general point of view on these horses, and I still feel that even if Duvan was 100% coming into this race, um, it would still be his first run of the season, he still would have that bad experience from last year, um, potentially in his mind, uh, I think it was the... the, the the, the shortest price ever to lose in the Cheltenham Festival, won at four last year. And of course, his injury, he stopped start campaign this year. So even if he got to 100% this year, I still think there are, there are question marks. His first one of the season, of course. And Altior, the momentum seems to be with this horse, it really does. I think he was he was much better than I expected on Saturday, he really was. I was a, I'd never really been a, a true believer in this horse. Thought he was, I thought he was decent in the article, but nothing superstar like. But he was wonderful on Saturday, destroying Politologue, and he's bound to come on for that run uh, next month. And uh, I think his one hundred percent is just less complicated than Duvan's one hundred percent. If that makes any sense, I hope it does. But you know, I love both these horses, but probably Altior for me, I'd have to say. I certainly agree with you, Chris. Gavin, is it going to be three votes for Altior? Definitely, yeah. I mean, you haven't seen Duvan since last March, so it's hard to believe he is going to be 100%. No, but for the benefit of the question, we have to pretend that, that he's he is 100%. Absolutely. But it's hard to pretend. Yeah, we'll just pretend for the, for the good of the show. Okay. Yeah. Altior. Altior. Even, even if Duvan, that was hammering sizing John, turns up at Cheltenham. Altior. Altior. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Any reasons? Just he's the best horse in training. Okay. So there you go. Three strong votes for Altior if he clashed with Duvan in the Queen Mother Champion Chase. The second question that we're going to put to you, Chris, is, is Bouverdere guaranteed to be the shortest price favourite of the entire festival? So is Bouverdere guaranteed to go off the shortest price favourite of the entire festival? I think at the moment you definitely have to say yes, but let's just explore the possibilities that are not happening. Let's start with Bouverdere. He's one two best price of 188 bet to win the champion hurdle at the moment. And for me, the only two who can usurp him from that position would be Sam Crow or Altior. Um, they're just painting a picture here. You see all the favourites go in on day one, uh, including Bouverdere. 
and then you know the punters have got monies in their money in their in their wallet coming in day two is a great Irish uh, presence of course at Cheltenham and it may be that we see a huge plunge on Sam Crow overnight in day one and straight through until 1.30 when that first race takes place at the Ballymore on that Wednesday. There may just be an enormous plunge. I mean, this horse has already been talked about in, in the huge superlatives. She's a new Irish icon. It's bigger than Bono at the moment, this horse. It's, it's extraordinary. So it may just be that it catches fire on day two of the festival. And we see his price tumble from evens at the moment and at four to six and at four to seven and at one to two. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen, but it might happen. It might happen. This horse has got, you, you know, something special about it. It's captured the public's imagination. And it might just be that with some big winnings claimed on day one, that the, the gamble just is relentless. It's powerful. It's pounding on Sam Cohen day two. And all of a sudden, it's a shorter price than Bouva Dare. Whoa, that is some prediction. Sam Crow could be the shortest price favourite of the entire Cheltenham Festival. No chance. Tell viewers, Gavin. Let's be smug about this. What no. price have you got Sam Crow back that fall for the Ballymore of a Circle? Uh, be honest. Ten to one. Ten to one. Ten to one to win any race. But I mean, to win the, any race at the Cheltenham Festival. Price for an ice cream. Gavin Lynch. Small uh, bet. He thinks Sam Crow could go no, off. No, no chance. Why? Uh, this Boover Dale will go off the shortest. These have, have all had the runs. There's no more runs to be had. You couldn't be impressed with Fine getting beat by a three miler. So Boover Dare will go off around two's on. Yeah, well, Chitabello still has to run at Kelso during the week now. Okay. Yeah. That'll rock the market, it yeah. It certainly will, yeah. And by the, the way, you that's engaged getting married, do you know what Wednesday is? Wednesday is Valentine's Day. Well done. Yeah. Just done. I only found that out about three years ago, which tells you the story about my love life growing up. I never knew when Valentine's Just Day was. Just make sure you don't forget. No, I won't forget. Okay, number three. Of all the favourites at the festival, who is the best value right now? Gavin, we're going to give this to you first. Who is the best value favourite of the Cheltenham Festival? Uh, cause of Cause is 3-1 to one for the cross country. Okay. My favourite horse. Yeah. He didn't really do much to advertise the form. Uh, he was only beating 50 lengths. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a good run for him at the Christmas time. And Auvergnat and Josie's orders locked horns at Punchtown? They did. They did. Anything um, to fear there? Not really. Um, I'd say Tiger Roll is the main danger. 8 or 10 to 1 shot, but... Cause of cause for me, a three to one is good value. I think uh, one eight eight better going a big price and might bite for the Gold Cup. So we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Mm. Um, I actually think Altior is the best value favourite because I think he's the one that should be shorter. He should be the Bouvard Air price, I think. I think two to two five on. is a fair reflection of uh, his chances of winning a first Queen Mother Champion Chase. And uh, Chris, for you, who's the best val value favourite at the Chatham Festival? So of all the favourites at the moment, who is the best value right now? Tough question, tough question. And some will completely disagree with my answer here and some may think I've got a point. But looking at price here, um, I don't think it's, it's worth talking about odds on shots or even money shots. So I've looked, I've had a, a look at presenting Percy at 3-1 for the RSA. He's definitely been laid out for this, for this race. Meticulous preparation for this race. The connect, connections seem really sweet on his chances and crucially for me he's already won at the festival he won the per temps festival the, the per temps handicap last year very easily so we know he loves Cheltenham Davy Russell on board a master uh, around the Gloucestershire track um, at 3 to 1 at the moment 1 8 bet to win the RAC it looks good and when you look who he's up against it looks like Mona Lee will be definitely his main rival I spoke to No for you he won 8 bet ambassador on Friday and he's really excited about um Almost certainly going to be riding Mona Lee in the RSA, so he's excited about that. That looks like a real uh, challenge for presenting Percy. Beneath that, you've got Jan Murth, who'll probably run the JLT, invitation only, who looks like running the JLT. Same with Album Photo. And then Black Cotton, for me, not good enough uh, to, to, to displace presenting Percy for this race. So for me, the best value at the moment is 3 to 1. When you look at the field he's up against, it's presenting Percy in the RSA. Well, that's good news for us, Gavin. We're both big presenting Percy fans. Yeah, presenting Percy looks the one, doesn't he? What he did in Gorham Park. Pat Kelly going for his third winner three years in a row. So, mm. yeah, no, presenting Percy for me, definitely. Two winners out of three at the Chetland Festival for Pat Kelly. Okay, so we have to reflect back on Newbury. We spoke about Altior, but there was another superstar, many believe a superstar, running at Saturday as well. Uh, Native River won the Denman Chase in pretty emphatic fashion, Gavin. Yeah, but he had his ideal conditions. It was a three-runner race. The ground was soft. He got a solo 
I mean, I couldn't have him on my mind for the Gold Cup at 6-1. to one. Really? Now, he's going to run a big race. It's great news for supporters of might bite. 4-1 to is a huge price. I think that's the best price he is, is 188 bet. Is that Native River is going to make the running. The, uh, Nicky Henderson has said that he's going to... Uh, they're going to hold up might bite maybe second third fourth and challenge late so having native river in the race is an ideal horse to go at but i mean he was too slow to win the four miler the race was over and he stayed on again second to manila rocco last year he ran a nice race in the gold cup he's not going to get a solo in the gold cup now unless the ground came up soft native river i don't think can win it yeah i always uh, think he's the equivalent of the new one running in the champion hurdle and that he's always going to look a bit unlucky staying on he's always going to run okay yeah. but he's always going to get outpace coming down the hill he is yeah when they turn in, there's going to be two or three of them. Size and John might bite tanking on the outside of the matchup. But as I said to you, I thought Native River should be a 10 to 1 shot. On a scale of 1 to 10, how shocked would you be if Native River won the Gold Cup? 10 out of 10 shocked, honestly. Unless it, yeah, I would, unless it's soft ground. He can't win the Gold Cup. Okay, so he can't win the Gold Cup, but can Kalashnikov win the Supreme Novice Hurdle? Yeah, he definitely has to have a good chance. The one thing that was interesting in the Betfair Hurdle was that he was completely off the bridle. For a good bit of the race, certainly a mile out, he, he looked to be in big I was trouble. like Amy Murphy, I couldn't find him. I, yeah. They all looked the same colours down the back, mud spattered everywhere. He looks probably the best British train runner in the Supreme, uh, but to win that off 141, I think he won by six lengths and nine lengths, so he must be up to around, say, 150 now, and you have to be over 150 to contend in the Supreme. So He's and by uh, Kalanisi, and also the trainer thinks uh, that he will prefer a better ground. And it's funny when you look through the race, it's certainly not a vintage Supreme Novice no. hurdle. And Sam Crow, it looks as though, is going for the Ballymore. If the cap fits, is a nice horse. He's no yeah. superstar. Lorena is going to go for the Mayor's Novice yeah. hurdle. Claim and Taken Forgan got was beat. beaten at Musselburgh. And Mangley Khan kind of beat, is yeah. fast turning into the horse that you don't want to back. So yes. it's, it's, it's not a vintage Supreme Novice hurdle. No, no, no. Kalashnikov would have a great chance if he's there with him and you're near the last. I mean, he's going to power up the hill. He looks like a horse that wants to say two and a half miles, doesn't he? Mm. Mm, certainly so next horse we're going to talk about could be called after both of us Gavin talk is cheap Tell talk us is more. cheap yeah Alan King um, it won the other day over three miles in, in, uh, in Newbury and Alan King was interviewed afterwards and he was very surprised that the horse won he thought it needed the run and secondly that the horse wants good ground so what race is he going to go for I don't know uh, he's not qualified for the pretemps which is a pity because he'd have a great chance in that he may go for a Coral Cup or he may wait there's a big handicap hurdle in entry Mm. Uh, he won off 133, I think, um, the other day. So he's probably going to be up to, say, 140. But he travelled fantastic. It was his first time over the trip. And if he gets good ground, talk is cheap is definitely a horse to follow. OK, talk is cheap for Alan King and Gavin Lynch. And uh, we also had a really interesting card at Warwick on Saturday. St. Calvados is a horse that many people didn't know much about, especially going into Saturday. But that was a fair performance. Oh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a super horse. Um, he's, he was three from four in France. He's now three from three in Britain. He's only a five-year-old. Uh, he won't be 22 lengths. The time of his race was very fast, 4.06. There was a two-mile handicap hurdle, which should be quicker, ran later in the card, and that was 4.19. So he was 13 seconds quicker than a hurdle race. So he's, he's, he's a fair tool. Um, he's a brilliant jumper as well. It's fantastic. He hurdled a couple of them down the back straight. He was, he was very, very good. I reckon that the fastest four furlongs in Cheltenham will be the first four furlongs in this race. Yeah, so... We're going to try and figure out what way the Racing Post article is going to be run, OK? So, Gavin, they're jumping the first fence. What's in front? I think Petit Mouchoir and St. Calvados will lead to the first. And I think yeah. Ruby will take a sit on footpad, even though he led the last day. And then So Royal will definitely sit in behind. Brain power, he'll be thinking about jumping the first. Um, but i say it's going to be just the fastest run race of the meeting. And it's probably the best race of the meeting in terms of good horses, competitive race, and a great spectacle. And, like... So, like, Footpad and St. Calvados have, have literally been flawless so far. Yeah. So, something has to give. Yeah, I know you'd be watching it through the back of the telly or the back of the couch. I mean, they're going to just be going so quick. But it looks to be a fantastic. Now, most people race. are not as lucky as you and they haven't backed Footpad at 5 to 1 to win the race. But if they were to have a bet now, would you be advising them to back Footpad at evens or St. Calvados at uh, 7 to 1? I think St. Calvados has a better chance than So Royal. Okay. The best chance So Royal has is if they all go way too fast and he just picks up the pieces. But I th could see them switch, and I think St. Calvados will go off shorter than So Royal. And is St. Calvados now the main danger to football, or is it still Petit Mouchoir? It's hard to say. Probably Petit Mouchoir or St. Calvados. The two of them have a good each way chance, yeah. Mm. But it'll be down to jump and won't it? It certainly will. Um, moving on to Sunday in Ireland, Gavin. And uh, the, the, the Fox Hunters at Cheltenham is a race mm. that it, it's, it's, a, it's a still a head scratcher. We've only got four weeks to go. And it's very hard to make head or tail of it. We've got a lot of horses that aren't qualified, like Gil Gamboa. And maybe the horse that chased home Gil Gamboa could now be the one to beat. I have two tips this week for Cheltenham. 
So am I allowed to talk about one yet or not? No. But it's better to do one now and one at the end. Okay. So I'll, I'll allow you to, to divulge. Uh, the first tip. Well, it can't be Gil Gamboa because he's not no. qualified, so it must be Burning Ambition. Well done. I think Burning Ambition is a great chance. He's only a seven-year-old. A lot of the time with Fox Hunters, it's for horses who've had their career. Finished. And, and then they come back as a 10 or 11-year-old. In 2016, in the Fox Hunters in Cheltenham, the first six home were covered by four lengths. Last year, the first eight home were covered by five and a half lengths. To me, it's just an average bunch. Pasha de Polar won it. The age groups last year were like 10, 9, 11, 12, 10, 11, and 12, right? Pasha de Polar is now rated 139. A Wonderful Charm is now rated 138. Fox Rock has been to Cheltenham twice, can't have him. He wants soft ground. I just think Burning Ambition, now he's by Scorpion. So you'd wonder, yesterday he looked all over winner after last. You Scorpion just is, is fast becoming yeah. the favourite to be the leading sire at Cheltenham. Yeah, and with Mike Bite and so on. But uh, he ran a fantastic race yesterday. He jumps brilliant. As I said, he's a big horse. He's only seven. Rob Jones it's has ridden him. A bit, a bit, like he's not a brilliant jumper. He's, ah, he's a good jumper, yeah. He was even making ground up in Gil Gamboa. You have to remember, Gil Gamboa a year ago was rated 159. And yesterday the ground suited Gil Gamboa more than maybe Burning Ambition. Okay. Rob Jones has ridden him all seven times. He's won five. He doesn't get to claim the seven in... Rob James, even. Rob, ja Rob James, sorry. It's Rob. Rob, is it? Yeah, I think so. Um, and I think that uh, on the better ground, hopefully he'll stay. Mm. But six to one, uh, like, is this really value gap? Yeah, I think it is, yeah. I could see him being... What price is he going to go off on the day? Seven to two. Wow. I can't see it myself now, but uh, far be it for me to question the expertise of Gavin Lynch. So that was Burning Ambition. And uh, we're going to go back in time now to Saturday at Nace and uh, Benny Disdue. Now, there is a horse that can jump. Yeah, she's a very good mare. The only thing is, you know, we're doing a Cheltenham preview. It's hard to see her maybe winning at Cheltenham. Like, what's she going to go in? The mare's hurdle or the Ryanair. So I'd say she probably won't even go to Cheltenham. But she did very well. Um, she beat uh, her stable companion and uh, gave it seven pound. Asturia. At Asturia, yeah. 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 And she won't beat it by two and a half lengths. So she's... An excellent mare, but I just don't see her winning the Cheltenham. And it looks like she might go down the Vroomber Mag route of, of the OLBG mare's hurdle. Um, could you see her ruffling the feathers of Apple's Jade? No. No. It's very hard to switch back from fences to hurdles. So. But Vroomber Mag did it. Yeah, I just think uh, Apple's Jade's just a better horse. And uh, let's kind of look forward in time maybe to next season or the season after. Could potentially Benny's to do win a Gold Cup? No, I wouldn't think so. It's very, very rare, you know. It's a long time since mares are going to take on grade one horses, so, mm. you know, it's a long time since Dawn Run, etc., so I wouldn't think so. Okay, so we're, we're lukewarm on Betty's to do. Yeah, no, she's very good now, but mm. just maybe not up to winning the Cheltenham. Anything else catch your eye over the weekend? Um, AC Milan in the bumper mm. was, was quite good on Saturday in Newbury. It won by 11 lengths, and at the time was actually two seconds slower than the Betfair hurdle, but it did it very well. It's actually only a four-year-old. It may or may not go to Cheltenham, I think. Mm. Did you hear that it will? Well, it's just Anthony Honeyball, and, and I'm sure everybody was absolutely delighted for Anthony that uh, after Fountain's windfall and the uh, horrible accident that happened during the week, which I'm sure you were disgusted to hear. Yeah, no, it's very upsetting for these small trainers. Like, my father was a, a, a small trainer back in the day, and they used to get, he'd be so close to horses, it's amazing. And mm. you could see Anthony Honeyball that he was, he was devastated. So. But the one thing he did say after the race, he was just worried that AC Milan might have had a very hard race, and maybe... Cheltenham might just bottom him out and maybe Aintree might be a better option. Yeah, probably He's will. a bloody good horse though, isn't he? He is, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's, as you said, it's a tonic hopefully for Anthony Honeyball to have another good horse instead of Fountain's Windfall. Absolutely. So I think the time has come now. We've given one of your anti-post tips for the Cheltenham Festival. I think the time has come for the second Gavin, Lo Gavin Lynch anti-post tip for the Cheltenham Festival, which is? Black Bow for the champion bumper. Okay. I've already tipped up holographic for the bumper, but he was absent from the the Dublin Racing Festival, which is a bit of a worry. So uh, this fellow here replaced him in the winner's bumper on the Saturday in Leopardstown. Now, at Christmas, it won on the 26th. It wasn't impressive. It looked like it was going to get beat, um, but it battled away well. But the, the performance the last day was far superior. It beat Rhinestone, and there were uh, 15 lengths clear of uh, Brace Yourself, Manila, Encore, and Rapid Escape, who'd won six bumpers. I think the form of that race is very, very solid. Um, but Black Bow, at 6-1, to one, I could see him definitely going off a bit shorter than that in the day. So has he gone above holographic in your pecking order? Yeah, it's just a bit of a worry why holographic. He wasn't even entered in the five-day decks, so that's just a small worry. And it'd be great for, for the, uh, the family of Archie O'Leary because they've already won the bumper twice with Florida Pearl and missed that. 
you're probably too young to remember. Oh, I remember both of them. I remember missed that as well. So it'll be a great achievement if they won three bumpers. Yeah, yeah. And he's a gorgeous looking horse as well. He's a real imposing individual, isn't he? Yeah, he's a huge horse. Yeah, it's he actually won a point to point in the UK and then went to Willie Mullins, which is very rare for that to happen. Mm. And would how how scared would you be if, if AC Milan did show up at Cheltenham? Do you still think he's a better horse? I do, yeah. I think that maybe the ground played into AC Milan's hands on Saturday. He's only four. I'd be surprised if he didn't have more gears than him. Okay. So we're going to add Burning Ambition and Black Bow to Gavin Lynch's list of Cheltenham Antipost fancies, which look like this. Hmm. Now, unfortunately, there is one that struck off the list. Yeah. Fountains Windfall. Well, it's very sad. for the RSA. Yeah. It's very sad for connections. As we were saying, people do get very attached to these horses, so it's, uh, it's a huge pity for a small stable. Hmm. We're going to have to get... People should back off. You go off the Martin Pipe. Okay. Is this 25 to 1 still available? No. I think there's 14. Yeah, you took all of that. Yeah. Well, I wish I did. What price could he go off for this? I don't know. It, it's obviously owned by JP and trained by Charles Burns, but if it gets in, you'd imagine somebody like Donnie McInerney might ride it, so it could go off maybe a 6 to 1 favour. I don't know. Okay, so there you go. There you go. Get on, off you go. And my uh, list of anti post fancies for the Shetland Festival. Yeah... Time will tell, I suppose. Yeah, no, you've got some good ones. Mm. Presenting Percy and yeah, Squaw Tour and Tully East. Yeah, no, it's okay. But there's there's one big one to be added to the list right. today, Gavin. But yes. my advice to you would be now to close your ears. Yeah, right. you're not going to like it. Go on. I'm telling you now, you're not going to like it. Who is it? It is for the JLT Novices Chase. Right. And it's a horse called Modus. Modus. Yeah, Modus. The travelly thing. There he is, the travelly thing, yeah. 16 to 1 for the JLT Novice Chase. Now before, now I know, I know, I've seen your reaction. I know, I know all the negatives. I know, what don't. About the, what about the hill? Yeah, I know, I know. But hold on, can right, I just on, try on, and convince yeah. you? Go on. Just let me try and convince okay. you, okay? Okay, the favour for the race at the moment is Willoughby Court, okay? Yes. Willoughby Court is rated 150 over fences, okay? Yeah. He was rated 152 over hurdles. Modus mm. is rated 156 over fences already. So he's already rated six pound higher okay. than Willoughby Court, who's favour for the race. He was rated 156 over hurdles. Now, I know about the hill. I know it's a big hill. And I know Modus is in love with hills, okay? But you have to remember, he was second to Moon Racer in a champion bumper. Yeah. Okay? And he was sixth in the Coral Cup, not beaten very far behind Super Sunday off a mark of 156. He's a really good jumper. I loved the way he jumped around Kenton on Friday. I just thought he looked in love with the game. He was attacking his fences. It was a mess of a race. He got an easy lead. But if you go through the race, Gavin Lynch, you've Footpad, yes. who's a single-figure price, not going to run. No. You've Monolly, who's in the top four in the bet, and he's not going to run. No. You've got Finian's Oscar, who's going to run over hurdles. And you've got Janworth, who Alan King has said will either go for the RSA or the Sayers Hurdles. So you've got four of the top eight in the betting are almost guaranteed not to run. Okay? Willoughby Court, as we said, is favoured at four to one. He's no star, is he? He won the Ballymore last year, but yeah. And I'm tipping up a horse that's four times the price of Willoughby Court. That's yes. rated six pound higher than him. That has good form at Cheltenham, and that jumps really well. Have I convinced you? Sort of. What you could do is maybe put a lay in running to lay him at three to one, <laughs> turning in <laughs> just to get your money back. Well, this is an anti-post show, Gavin, so we can't do that. Okay. But sixteen to one. Do you not think there's some value there, given what I've said? Yeah. 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 No. It's a, no, it's a good argument. Yeah, well, I did my best. Trying to convince people about Modus is not the easiest task in the world. So there you go, folks. That's it from us. There's only how long to go, Gavin? Four weeks tomorrow. Four weeks tomorrow, which and means... The good news is there's only 28 days in February, I found out yesterday. There is only 28 days in February. Which means that we've only got three more up in the ante shows to go. Have a good one for next Monday. Have you? Yep. Can you, can you give uh, viewers a little teaser? A uh, handicap hurdler. Okay. Tell you next Monday. Trained in what country? The UK. Wow. The UK trained handicap hurdler. I know it already. No, I don't. Okay. That's it from us. I've been David Jennings. He's been Gavin Lynch. Thanks to Chris Graham from our sponsors, 188 Bet. Thanks for watching.